jack it up. Hurts keeps, Hurts cuts, Hurts has the first down, and Jalen Hurts might have just put it away for the Eagles. Touchdown. Tyrese Betsy and the Sixers are going to win this game. Joel Tuck turned around in the lane. Another 30 and 10 performance for Joel Embiid. Oh, Hurts. Connects with Devontae Smith. And welcome back to 215 Scoop Podcast. Um, Eagles in the Super Bowl, so that's huge. Um, lots to go into. We're previewing the, the Super Bowl today. Um, going to be a longer episode. Uh, but first things first, Asher, how are you doing? Um, Super Bowl is less than a week away, just a few few days away, actually. Um, I'm super pumped, uh, but what about you? Yeah, no, it's uh, t- right now today is Wednesday when we're recording. It's actually like a really nice day in Philly. It's like almost yeah. 60 degrees. It really seems like the city's buzzing. Mm-hmm. I hear all these people talking about like, oh, if the Eagles, even if the Eagles lose, like I'm not going to class next week. Like all the people talking about like what they might be doing for the parade on Thursday. Like mm-hmm. the city's buzzing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And here I'm, I'm here. I'm here at State College. Once again, we have a beautiful, beautiful day. But I was at classes today, and like really all this week. Um, I've been seeing a lot of like Eagles jerseys and yeah. Eagles merch. So like the Eagles fan base is pretty, pretty big here. Like I, I, I'm apparently I, I'm hearing that people are making reservations in restaurants already for the Super Bowl. They're like, they got like huge parties. Like uh, I think champs is the one like sports bar. Yeah. And they already have like a party room for somebody's birthday as well. Or like, I don't know, like some, some restaurants have, I, I, that's what I've heard. I've heard that there's a lot of like Eagles fans trying to party here for the Super Bowl. So, um, but yeah, specifically, what are your plans? What are your plans for the game? I am still, I'm weighing out my options between going down to uh, Center City, being in a bar there, seeing like if I could, if I could squeeze in one or mm-hmm. just going back home and watching with my family. Yeah. So it's kind of, I, I want to, it's, it's such a big game. I want to watch it like, just kind of have that memory with my family. They're all big Eagles fans. But then uh-huh. also it's like if they win, like how crazy it would be in Center City. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to have fun whatever I do for sure. Yeah, that's it. exactly. Yeah. Like I'm debating going to my best friend's house or, um, or again, staying with my family. My family, they never really done anything big for the Super Bowl. Like it was, it's always kind of like me. Like it's always like my mom, my dad, and then like just the kids. Like that's it um so like this year like my brother's going away to the mountains and he's going to be up there for the game my yeah. sister she's going to her friend's house in princeton um and yeah so like my parents were not really doing anything so they're kind of like telling me like hey go find plants elsewhere so <laughs> probably gonna go to uh, my buddy's place um that's not too far out of philly um you know jack yep. gonna go to his place and then um yeah and then probably go down to center city if um the win uh, but anyway, uh, re- let's recap this Niners game that happened about a week and a half ago uh, in Philadelphia. Eagles won 31-7. Um, really ugly matchup. R- really felt bad for the Niners there. They got stripped down to their fourth-string quarterback at one point. Yeah. Uh, they almost had Christian McCaffrey playing quarterback. Uh, so pretty pretty nuts. Um, we thought this game was going to be a lot closer, but obviously that just did not happen. Um, but your thoughts on that game, Asher? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I'm thinking back to all the games that we had this season where it was like the Titans game and the Bears mm-hmm. game and the, the Cardinals game, just like games where it was like, uh, we, I mean, like we didn't play that well, but we just kind of we just kind of won. Mm-hmm. Like not a whole lot to recap. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I feel the same exact way about the NFC championship. Yeah. But it's, yeah, like, like- it's, like, yeah, but it's like we just kind of went in and it's like they – didn't play that well, and we did okay, and it's like now we're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's so weird to have that feeling yeah. over like one of the biggest games in this franchise's history. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, this is only their fourth Super Bowl berth in their in their like what sixty year history, you know. So, um, well, actually, they're getting they're getting close to hundred years. I'm sorry, they're like ninety something. Yeah, but I mean, the Super Bowl's been the Super Bowl fifty seven, so fifty seven. Yeah, years. so like only fourth Super Bowl birth in the Super Bowl era. So like, again, yeah. this is a rare occurrence, and it's really weird. Like my feeling after last week, it was like, oh my gosh, yeah, like oh my god, we're going to Super Bowl, but like it didn't really hit me. 
because it didn't feel like, you know, like that Vikings matchup back in 2017. Yes. I didn't get the same exact like thrill because it was like it got too easy with Josh Johnson in quarterback <laughs> playing. We're playing against Josh Johnson. Um, so, like, <laughs> I don't think that's much of a competition. It was either him or a rookie quarterback and Brock Purdy, who, like, everybody, again, was hyping up, but he was dealing with a UCL tear. <laughs> yeah. I you mean, that, that play was pretty ugly. Hassan gets yeah. him basically immediately, hits him while his arm's going back. He punches mm-hmm. the ball forward for a fumble. So they turn the ball over. Their only reliable quarterback left on the roster they can't throw beyond, like, two yards. Mm-hmm. And like as soon as that you see him come back in and they're down, they're down what twenty? They're down twenty points with like five yeah. minutes left. They're handing the ball off because he can't throw. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're not even it trying. Like this game, it seemed like this game. It feels like this game was like over after the first fifteen minutes. After the first quarter, yeah, like as soon as that Purdy like, injury that happened, it. my brother, my brother just goes, "It's over." And like normally in the first quarter, you're like, "Uh, no," but it kind of it felt that way. It was like the Niners were like deflated. Yeah, they were. And then like the, the the super weird thing is like we're gonna go back go into this in a little bit, but like kind of like how the goalposts still shifted when it came to the Eagles. Like people are now criticizing the Eagles path to the Super Bowl and how it's probably the easiest ever and all that crap. But like before the and it's a championship game, it was everybody helping up the Niners and saying like how they they're gonna humble the Eagles and that they're finally gonna take that final step and you know clinch up a Super Bowl birth since for the first time since 2020, you know. So, you know, I, I don't know. Like, it, it was just really weird. And again, we're gonna go into that a little bit. But the overall feeling after this game for me was just like a very weird feeling. And like right now, being an Eagles fan in the Super Bowl and we're favored, it's just a weird feeling. So I'm not so I'm, I'm not so used to the Eagles being like so dominant. You get you get what I'm saying? Like yeah, this year. Yeah. Dominant to the point where people are trying to poke holes in, like, their legitimacy. Mm-hmm. Where they're trying to say, oh, well, they didn't play anybody yet. Or, mm-hmm. you know, the rush defense in the middle of the season was kind of suspect, even though, like, it's really good now. Mm-hmm. Or, I don't like, the past defense has been good all season, but, like, mm-hmm. this game, it might be bad. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing you can really say, like, this is a weakness for this team. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, but, like, Needless to say, that was a very dominant performance by the Eagles. They won turnover battle three to nothing. We talked about this uh, before the game, and we said one of the key factors to winning this was winning the turnover battle, which they did. Um, so moving on to this kind of narrative that's going around that the Eagles have had like this this super, super easy path. I mean, if you think about it, we've played Daniel Jones and the New York Giants, and then we beat Brock Purdy and Josh Johnson. We went to this just a little bit moments ago, but I'm still going to talk about it a little bit more. Um, do you think there's legitimacy to this argument? Like, do you think the Eagles did have a super, super easy path? Because, I mean, I kind of agree, but it kind of aligns to, like, what's been said about the Eagles all season in terms of the strength of schedule. I mean, we all know the narrative that's being pushed pretty much all year long. So, like, I'm getting the same kind of feeling here. Yeah, I mean, there's legitimacy to it. I have, thinking back, I can't really remember an easier path to the Super Bowl for any team. Mm. But then again, you can only play who's in front of you. Mm-hmm. And it's not like that Niners game just doesn't count. Like, that, that was a very dominant Niners defense, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, defending the run. Mm-hmm. And the Eagles kind of tore through them. Kenneth Gainwell yeah. just looks like one Sean McCoy in his prime. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 148 total rushing yards against the Niners rushing defense. Yeah. And also, they also have a lethal passing attack. And we only allowed them to one sack. Yep. So it was like if you look at the stats and you like, they're all talking about the quarterback position, but it, the game is more than just the quarterback position, and the Eagles dominated in in many other ways. You know. Yeah, I, I AJ Brown didn't really do anything again. Jalen Hurts, I think, had under two hundred yards, and they didn't really he have one twenty one. He had one twenty one. Yeah. So yeah, the, we're just like the pace of play. Mm-hmm. possession of the ball like it was mm-hmm. all very it was very uh methodical like mm-hmm. we, i think even if purdy had played that game the mm-hmm. it just seemed more in control yeah absolutely um now moving on to the actual super bowl we have the eagles facing off against the chiefs eagles favored by one and a half um the storylines are like loaded when it comes to the super bowl we got andy reed who used to coach for the eagles 
uh, you know, facing off against his former team. And then you got the brothers, which I'm sure if you've been on social media at all this week, you've probably read something about them. Um, the media has been, you know, all over that story. So we got Jason Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, who are brothers going up against each other in the Super Bowl. So that's a unique um, dynamic right there. Something that's never happened before. Um, and then on top of that, we have um, a little bit of a story behind Nick Sirianni and his um, ties to Andy Reid and a little bit of a revenge game there. So lots of storylines here. But specifically, Asher, I know you wanted to go back to like 2012 to when the Eagles first fired Andy Reid and kind of like the journey since then. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like it'd be it's going to be fun to kind of look at this zoomed out from a historical context kind of move in closer to let's look at what happened to both teams this season, look at how they got here, and then we can start looking at what's going to happen in this game. But 10 years ago, Andy Reid had probably hit, really his first bad season as Eagles head coach. Mm-hmm. You know, over a decade, the Eagles were just dominant in the 2000s, made mm-hmm. it to the Super Bowl, lots of uh, NFC championship appearances, mm-hmm. never could really seem to get over the hump. A lot of bad losses in the NFC Championship, and finally yeah. one four and twelve season, and he's gone. The Chiefs pick him up. The Chiefs trade for Alex Smith, and this is a Chiefs team that went two and fourteen the year before and was the mm-hmm. worst in the league. Mm-hmm. So they trade for Smith, they they hire Reed, and from then on, they're pretty much consistently a playoff team, around ten to twelve wins every year from twenty thirteen to twenty seventeen, but they're always losing in the divisional or the wild card round. Mm. And at this point, the question is starting to be raised. I'm sure you remember, you know, is Reed kind of like a fraud head coach? Kind of thing, yeah. things that people are saying about Doc Rivers now. Yeah, like a, definitely right. like a Doc Rivers, like consistently good and consistently coaches good teams, but can never get their teams yes. over the hump. Consistent underperformances in the playoffs and overperformances mm-hmm. in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Then in 2017, they draft some guy named Patrick Mahomes from Texas Tech with the 10th overall pick. Yeah. I was actually at that draft in person because it was in Philadelphia. Yeah. I had no idea who that guy was. <laughs> yeah, that was I was the same way. I was watching the draft and I like didn't think of any anything of it at all. Cause what what was what was what overall pick was it? It was tenth. And if you remember, two picks after was Deshaun Watson, who was a college superstar. So it was kind of like Patrick Mahomes over Deshaun Watson. Yeah, interesting, but I think we all know why. So um looking back, but like I don't know. When I thought when I watched that draft and I heard Patrick Mahomes, my actual first thought was like, eh, like he's probably not going to turn out to be much. Like I definitely believe in Deshaun Watson a lot more. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then so 2017, Mahomes sits behind Smith. Another kind of underperforming year. They again like 11 wins and they lose in the divisional round. Mm-hmm. Then Smith goes goes off to Washington. Mahomes mm-hmm. takes over. First season as a full time starter, I think he started one game in 2017 towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So his first, his next like 15 starts, 16 Mm -hmm. starts, he's just incredible. Wins Mm -hmm. MVP easily, over 5,000 yards, over 50 touchdowns. They Mm -hmm. make the AFC championship game, they lose, he wins MVP. And then it pretty much, I feel like every season for like the next three seasons after that, people were. Mm -hmm waiting for like the NFL to catch up to him and it never happened. Right. Like we were kind of like, all right, well, you know, the like 2019 Lamar Jackson had a great year and then mm-hmm. kind of not that he fell off, but he wasn't as dominant in the years after Mahomes mm-hmm. never became less dominant. Right. Tyreek Hill gets traded this year. The receiving core is depleted. Mm-hmm. Nobody, but Travis Kelsey. I mean, Andy Reid's still calling the shots, of course, and that off he's a great mm-hmm. offensive play caller, but mm-hmm. I mean, the NFL still has not figured out Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They've made it to five consecutive AFC championships, three and two record in those. He's already won the Super Bowl once, won Super mm-hmm. Bowl MVP. Mm-hmm. Had a pretty good darn performance in the other Super Bowl versus Tom Brady. I'm sure you remember the offensive line was just consistently failing him, and he was yes making something out of nothing pretty much every play. Yep. Yeah, I remember he was just, like, scrambling around. I remember, like, the – Dude, the photo of him in his press press conference afterwards is like infamous because he just looks dead. Mm-hmm. Like he looks so dead tired because that beat that Niners defensive line was not Niners. I'm sorry, Pardon Bucks me. defensive line was like ruthless and just like tore him apart. And offense, yep. like you said, he just got he got like half of a second to throw anything. Yeah, and then so that year, the obviously very much put into the spotlight how much he's mm-hmm. carrying that team after that Super Bowl. 
they kind of bulk up the offensive line a little bit. And, you know, now we're – last year they make it to the AFC Championship again. Mm-hmm. Kind of surprising loss to the Bengals. This year they avenge themselves and we see them where they are now. Mm-hmm. Now for the Eagles, after yeah. firing Reed, they right. pick up Chip Kelly. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Dude, that foul man. That foul – but he was an innovator at the time. The offense is very fast paced. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember the there were that first year, defenses mm-hmm. had to call timeout just because their guys were getting tired. Like yeah. they, it wasn't I like a tactical that. thing. It mm-hmm. was just like, oh, we need to get these guys like a 30 second water break because they can't keep up. Mm-hmm. So the team goes 10 and 6. Foles has that one game where he throws seven touchdowns. Uh-huh. McCoy has a great year. Yeah. Uh, I think that was Deshaun Jackson had a great year that year. They yeah, made Jeremy Macklin's play. also on that team. Mm-hmm. I mean, that de- I think that offense that year was like what top that had to have been top 10, right? Top 10 offense. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of talented players. And then the wheels kind of fall off. Yeah. The next one. year we're starting Mark Sanchez at quarterback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark Sanchez. Yeah. I remember, and- I remember that, remember that preseason where he, um, where he like went off and everybody was like hyping up the Eagles because they went three and one in the pro se- postseason and they like torched like all three of their opponents. Not I really. That. I remember I don't that. Much I remember the hype. Season, but well, Mark- and then I remember that 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 year though, 2014, the Eagles started nine and three with Mark Sanchez. Did they? Yes. Including preseason. No, not including preseason. They started nine and three. I remember they started nine and three that that year, and then they got to it was like their last good win was against the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and they moved to ten and three, and then they lost their like following three matchups or something like that. Okay, and like it was a, and it was two straight ten and six seasons for Chip Chip Kelly before he went. Did he go four? And, I don't know. I think he was just fired after five and. Eight. Oh, they actually went seven and nine that year, but he was fired yeah. mid season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I I didn't know all those all those wins came in the beginning of that season. I don't remember that. Yeah, they did. I remember I remember the Eagles were looking like pretty good with Sanchez even, mm-hmm. and it just fell apart. <laughs> you happen to remember who the quarterback was the next year? Fun question. Uh, uh, Sam Bradford. It was Sam Bradford. Yep. So yeah, and then at midseason, Kelly gets fired. We have Pat mm-hmm. Shermer as the interim head coach. Mm-hmm. It's just. Not not a very interesting year. Sam Bradford wasn't fun to watch. Not at all. Clearly, that that offense was so like vanilla and just boring. Because yeah, because Sam Bradford is the definition of a vanilla quarterback. Like he's not good in anything, but like just he's just there. <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah. makes the right throws. Like he doesn't really turn the ball over. But no, I don't. No one really had fun watching that team. Is the point? No, no, but, not at all. Obviously, but anyway, it feels like something needs to change. Uh huh. I don't. Remember exactly they're around like nine, eight, nine, ten pick. They trade mm-hmm. up to get Carson Wentz uh-huh. in that draft. Right. They hire or uh, after uh, they don't re sign Schirmer as the full time head coach, they bring in Doug Peterson from the Chiefs, actually, and your disciple. Mm-hmm. So we have this new kind of era with Wentz and Peterson. Mm-hmm. He looks all right the first season. They all they go seven and nine, but Wentz nine. is obviously more fun to watch. There's clearly more of a spark to this team. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, we see Wentz just explode. Mm-hmm. The year before, Mahomes has his big season, and it was pretty clear that Wentz was going to win the MVP that season. Mm-hmm. And then obviously he gets hurt. We, we've we've gone over this a couple of times just because we're Eagles fans and we like to talk about right. that. Season. Yeah. And then Foles That's- comes in, makes his triumphant return, and you know that that history is history. There, we all we yeah. all know. What happened we all know then. what happened. So then. Eagles are kind of on top of the world for a short time. But when, you know, there's there's talk about is Wentz going to come back the same? Foles played so well in the in the mm-hmm. postseason. Should we keep him as the full-time quarterback and trade Wentz? Right. You know, Foles, ends up, yeah. Foles ends up going to the Jaguars the following year. Wentz never really looks the same. He gets scared. I remember watching him that following year, and I was like, he's just really, really scared. And I think the – I mean, there's a lot of factors that went into that Super Bowl year where, with with the shrine for Nick Foles. I mean, it's got to be hard being a quarterback of a team that you led to an 11-2 start, um, you know, build a shrine for your backup who led them to the Super Bowl. And, like, let's let's be honest, 
he was only a game manager of those last few games that he did play. Like that Falcons game wasn't a good game. Like he had two good games with the Eagles, you know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, legendary performances Nick Foles did. Um, but I mean, he gets a shrine built and I think that broke men- um, broke Carson Wentz mentally. And I think he just was never the fa- never the same after that because of that. Yeah. Of all the, of all the unfair things to happen to professional sports players, uh-huh. In like the time that I've been watching sports, that definitely ranks up there. Mm-hmm. Having to at getting your MVP taken from you because of an injury, mm-hmm. having to watch your backup win Super Bowl MVP, and obviously mm-hmm. like you get a ring, it's fun, but then to come back and just never reach those kind of same heights again, mm-hmm. and then the fan base kind of turned on him for reasons that I still don't really understand. Mm-hmm. I I thought you know, he he was never like I give up, like I can't do this anymore. Well, I remember, I remember the the couple of years, you know, between twenty like from twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen, you know, like those two seasons before we were like really bad. Mm-hmm. I remember Carson Wentz kind of carried this team a little bit, yeah. you know, like it wasn't it was never really his fault that we lost. It was like the defense would like remember that Jim Schwartz defense where they would play the, yeah. the corners like twenty yards off the line of scrimmage. I mean, it was like crap like that that led to Eagles losses, you know. So like, I remember I I I, I was a Wentz fan until 2020 when he started like just being absolutely atrocious. But like, I was stuck up for him. I was like, listen, like, really good player. You know, he's really carried this team. If you look at his stats, he was not bad at all. I mean, if you were looking at his stats on 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 the Eagles back then, he was not a bad quarterback. He still had like 30 touchdowns to like 15 interceptions. I mean, he had a good TD to INT ratio. Yeah. I mean, no, he's he a bad quarterback. And I think he, I think he got knocked a little too much. I, yeah. think, I think he became a little bit of a scapegoat there. 2019, I believe, was the year we let up the most sacks in the league. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we had a receiver over 500 yards receiving. Yeah, yeah. That was the year that Zach Ertz uh, broke the receptions record yep. for Frank, Fran- franchise record for most receptions in a season. I think that was the year. Yeah, that was the year. And then that was the year that uh, Wentz eventually got hurt once again in the playoffs against the Seahawks. Yeah, right? so that's uh, the that was the Jadavion Clowney kind of mm-hmm. dirty. I that that hit was dirty. I'm not I'm not gonna mince yeah. words there. Yeah, but anyway, uh, moving on with this build up to the Super Bowl. So we're in 2019. Um, mm-hmm. Eagles make the playoffs once again. Wentz. Um, Gets injured, he goes out with an injury, and we have who, who came in? Who uh, Josh? Josh, Josh McCown. yes, McCown with Josh like McCown I think he's just broken ribs or something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Josh, Josh, Mac, Josh McCown came in, Eagles lost. Um, 2020, they have that pitiful year. Um, yep. now prior to that season, that Eagles, um, surprisingly draft Jalen Hurts, who is yes. obviously the quarterback yeah. now. Um, kind of backstamps Carson Wentz even more. Another layer to this kind of really unfair treatment that Carson Wentz got in Philadelphia, in in my opinion, uh, he wasn't he wasn't good in 2020. But I think there's a lot of things that he just didn't deserve. Um, so Eagles draft Jalen Hurts. Um, Wentz obviously gets benched week like 14 of the season. Yeah. Hurts starts a couple games, um, leads us to a win against the Saints, and then loses the final two. But he like he looks all right. 2021, last year, Eagles are supposed to be a rebuilding team, really projected yeah. to be like a three or four win team. We right? ship ones off to the Colts. Yeah. Hurts um, and then, to the franchise. Yeah. And then Jalen Hurts leads us to the playoffs. Nine yeah. and eight, after starting what? Three, two, yeah. two and five. We started two and five and we finished. Yeah, Doug eight. Peterson. We fired Doug Peterson, mm-hmm. which at the time a lot of fans were not happy with. You know, he's mm-hmm. only three years removed. What Wentz clearly, you know, the injuries left him not the same. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say, you know, Peterson's only three years removed from being a Super Bowl winning head coach. Right. Like, it's not really – a lot of the things that happened with this team were out of his control. Mm-hmm. And then we bring in Nick Sirianni, who not – you know, no one was really happy to have him. Mm-mm. He was the Colts offensive coordinator for, like, a Colts team that was, like, okay, yeah. like, in the post-lock years. And you remember that first uh, that first press conference? He's, like mm-hmm. – Tripping all over his words, he's stuttering. Yeah, stuttering and like he's making like these quirky and corny like catchphrases and mm-hmm. metaphors, like planting a seed and like growing. Like I, I remember that. Yeah. What? 
he was he was like this team's gonna be a flower that grows or yeah something. it's gonna be a flower that blossoms and it's, it's like the team's gonna blossom like if I, well the team is blossom that's for damn sure yeah um so we have that we have nick nick Sirianni looks like a bozo which by the way um i mentioned this earlier i think but i don't remember um but he used to be the wide receivers coach on kansas city and andy reed actually fired him and actually nick Sirianni was the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, was a wide receivers coach for the Kansas City Chiefs back in 2013 when they had no no touchdown receptions by a wide receiver. Yeah. Well, that's that's interesting. 2012, Just, the year before they brought Reed in, yeah. Yep. But um, Tiriani was let go by Andy Reed um, once Andy Reed was brought in. So that, there's a little bit of a revenge factor here for Nick Sirianni here uh, as well. Um, but, yeah, where were we in the recap? Uh, that was basically it. So then Hurts – has his has his big year this year. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much just him and Mahomes in the running for MV, MVP. Mm-hmm. Now, and, and at the beginning of this year, if, if we could just talk about like the expectation mm-hmm. this year, the I mean, you and I projected the Eagles to go ten and seven, eleven and six, and that was being yeah. pretty optimistic. Yeah, you know, I think we, I remember we were questioning ourselves, like, are we being a little biased saying this team is going to have eleven wins? What? Yeah, no, and I mean they went out. I mean I remember a lot of the preseason predictions like Lee Wide. I mean there was this hype about the Eagles going into the season, and like mm-hmm. to be honest, I was sitting there kind of like I wasn't sure why the Eagles were getting all this hype. Um, yeah. But I mean, sure enough, I mean I predicted them to go eleven and six, I believe, to still clinch the NFC East. But I, I think I had them winning maybe one playoff game in the wild card round and then getting eliminated the divisional round. Yeah. Um, but looking at that in retrospect, um, I think, I think we both severely under underestimated this team's abilities. <laughs> that. And then also, I think a lot of teams, like I said, the Packers are going to win the NFC North. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. we both thought the Bucks were going to win at least like 12 games. The Rams, mm-hmm. same thing. It mm-hmm. became very clear within three to four weeks of this season that there were only about four or five good teams in the league. And we had yeah. already boxed the Eagles and the Chiefs into those categories. Mm-hmm. We kind of knew these guys were contenders very early in the season. Yeah, yeah. The, these, like the Eagles and Chiefs, right at the beginning of the season, kind of like asserted themselves as the, one of the most dominant teams in the league. And, I mean, it's this is might be one of the most predictable Super Bowl matchups. You know, if you if you go back to like week eight and you ask, you know, who's going to be in the Super Bowl – Eagles Chiefs was a matchup in there. So I think, you know, this is this doesn't really happen that often where mm-hmm. you have literally the league's two best teams collide in the Super Bowl. Um now to go in depth about some of these matchups, um, I'm gonna I want to talk about you know different parts of the game. So first of all, I want to start with the trenches. Um this is really where, where the game is gonna be won, in my opinion. I think this is like the key to victory. Um, now to compare the Eagles defensive line to the Chiefs offensive line going to that um going to that matchup right there, I want to just give you some stats. Um so the Chiefs have a 74.7% plot pass block win rate, which is the best in the league. And that's going up against probably the most lethal defense of the decade, probably in the past like 12 years. Um Eagles had 70 sacks, as we know, in the regular season, second all time, only behind those 83 Bears. Um, Chiefs only have 26 sacks allowed, which is third in the league. So these stats take into account when you're looking in this matchup with the Eagles defensive line going up to Chief, Chiefs offensive line, you know, how do you think this matchup is going to go in the big game? That I, I mean, it's, it really seems like the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. Yes. Kind of, kind of question. Mm-hmm. I think that the Eagles' offense, defensive line has been even more dominant than the stats show mm-hmm. in recent weeks, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, just talking about that one play, the Hassan Reddick uh, gets the Brock Purdy. I mean, that mm-hmm. was like split second. It, it seems like these guys have like one second to make a decision, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, we made I, Brock Purdy, uh, Josh Johnson coming in. You know, he doesn't really, it, he doesn't yeah. have a lot of experience anyway. So he obviously right. was going to be. A, but Danny Jones mm-hmm. looked pretty darn good all year, and he just mm-hmm. looked like a shell of himself in facing the Eagles defense. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like this Eagles defense, the the 
I mean, first of all, we need to know, like, sure, they had the second most sacks, sacks all time on a defensive line, but we need to mention that they had four guys on that defensive front that had 10 or more sacks. Leading the leading the way is Hassan Reddick. I think he got 16 and a half in the regular season time frame. So, I I, I mean, not only is the, this is the defensive line, like, it's not like the 70 sacks is being carried by one guy who got 20 sacks or something like that. You should like a bunch of guys with like five or six. No, yeah. like this, this, we, I mean, we're like four or five deep of like dominant pass rushers. So, yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think the stats don't even speak enough. I mean, they speak loud, but they don't speak loud enough to how good this Eagles defensive line is. And I'm, I think the Eagles D is going to be, this, this D line is going to be the key for the Eagles to win this game. I mean, if you don't get pressure on Patrick Mahomes, we all know how he is. I mean, he's elusive. He can avoid pressure. He can make plays in and out of the pocket. So, if, like, at least um, limiting him to inside the pocket and just consistently getting pressure on him should do the, do the trick. But I do want to talk about Patrick Mahomes against the blitz and against pressure. He's really, really successful. Um, he – I saw it was, like, total points um, against the blitz or something like that, and Patrick Mahomes has, like, 200 in his career, and, that, and the next closest is only, like – Drew Brees at like 97. I'm not sure what the stat was, but it was some ridiculous stat about Patrick Mahomes and how well he does against the Blitz. But very interesting, interesting matchup there. Yeah. Um, what, what what are your predictions exactly? You, well, you think that the Eagles are going to get the best of them? A lot of the reason that Mahomes is so good against the Blitz is because he's a very quick decision maker. He's able to pass out of a lot of different like arm angles, which I feel mm-hmm. like is it's not underrated because people are always like, oh, I can't believe you just made that throw. But mm-hmm. it's like when a guy like Hassan Reddick or Brandon Graham is coming at you, mm-hmm. they're also very good at kind of keeping their hands up, to deflecting passes. Mm-hmm. Holmes is able to get those passes off at a lot of different angles. Mm-hmm. He gets he throws a lot of passes. Like the Chiefs are in kind of like cheeky plays where they have like yeah. Travis Kelsey just kind of wait behind the offensive tackle and the home yeah. shovel pass it to him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So they have a lot of ways to make Mahomes – stay comfortable even when the blitz should make mm-hmm. him uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So so that all goes for credit to, to, to Andy Reid, really, yes. the play yeah. designer and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, flipping the script, Eagles offensive line, which is obviously one, one of the best, if not the best, in the league against the Chiefs defensive line. Um, now, everybody's talking about how the Eagles led the league with 70 sacks. Um, the Chiefs weren't second. Chiefs had 55 sack, sacks on the year. Now, that's no Eagles defensive line or pass rush, but it's still the second best in the league. So that's something to keep an eye on. And the Eagles allowed 44 sacks this year, which is 20th in the league. Now, granted, that number is a little bit inflated because we do have Jalen Hurts, who scrambles, and sometimes he just gets tackled for a loss and it goes down for a sack. So I think that names that that that's a little inflated there, and it's not doesn't really stay true to what – the Eagles offensive line is yeah. uh, but flipping the script. Um, Chiefs def- defensive line is still pretty lethal and can get to the quarterback looking at this. Uh, how confident are you in the Eagles being able to like stave off this defensive attack? Very good. Very confident one. Yeah. It's kind of not the exact opposite, but where you were saying the Eagles defensive line is even more dominant than it seems mm-hmm. because they have so many great pass rushers, so many different points of attack. Mm-hmm. The Chiefs have Chris Jones, who is a finalist for Defensive Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. Interior defensive lineman who is able to rush as, as well as any edge defender in the mm-hmm. league. I, mm-hmm. One of the most underrated players in the league, in my opinion. But as you were talking about, the, the sacks don't really tell the whole story about the Eagles' uh, offensive line's ability. Mm-hmm. I just saw a stat. PFF, Pro Football Focus, ranks you know every player in, according mm-hmm. to the position group. Right. Every Eagles offensive line starter is within the top seven of their position. Wow. FF grade. We have like an all star offensive line. Yeah. Like we have guys that are second stringers that could probably start in this league elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I think the Eagles and Howie Roseman and the management here have done an excellent job. Like since, since their tenure began, I mean, it's been ran by Howie Roseman and, Jeffrey Lurie, for as long as I can remember, I mean, I don't know when they were both, like, 
teamed up together, but I know it's been like 20 years since the 2000s. But I know consistently throughout my life, the Eagles have always been good in the trenches. And that's something that Howie Roseman deserves all the credit for. Um, The Eagles always make sure they're stacked in the trenches. And I think that's the reason why the Eagles have a really, really good shot and are actually favored to win this game. Um, Now, shifting to the offensive side of the ball, um, I want to talk about the offenses, and both of these offenses are super, super dynamic. Again, we have two of the front runners for MVP and Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts going up head to head, and just just the two most explosive offenses in the league. To give you some stats behind this, um, the Eagles average two twelve point five yards per completion, which is second in the league, um, and they have eighty explosive plays. Um, explosive play is twenty yards or more. Eagles have eighty of those in this season. Wow. Um, second in the league, but that's only second to the Chiefs, who have 83 <laughs> explosive plays. Okay. Um, and then the Chiefs also have 12.1 yards per completion, which is fourth. So two high power offenses, explosive offenses clashing. Uh, an, just another another matchup that's super super tight that makes this game like super unpredictable. Um, now, who do you give the edge to, and why? I'm going to give it to the Eagles based off of one thing, and that is injuries or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Mahomes, as we know, it's been pretty well chronicled. He still kind of has that bum ankle. Yeah. um, Speaking of that, today he spoke on that. Um, First of all, he's full participant in practice today. Mm -hmm. Um, Second of all, he said he feels pretty good, and he says it shouldn't hold him back on Sunday. Okay. So about that ankle injury, I really don't think that's going to be a factor in this game. All right, I might have to I might have to recalibrate my uh who I give the edge to, but also Juju Smith Schuster, who is the uh, Chiefs' leading receiver outside of Tra- Travis Kelsey, mm-hmm. he's questionable for the game. Mm-hmm. Darius Tony, who is just super explosive with the ball in his hands, mm-hmm. also questionable. Miko Hardman, who's one of the fastest players in the NFL, is out. He's on IR. Mm-hmm. So Mahomes already kind of had a limited supporting cast outside of Travis Kelsey after Tyreek was traded. And even more so for this game. Mm. One thing that kind of takes away that uh, mitigates that, though, right? The Re- Andy Reid has gone even further to make Mahomes comfortable. He has in the postseason. If you took his postseason average depth of target, mm-hmm. he and you put it across the whole regular season, he would actually have the lowest average depth of target in the NFL. Really. So it's a lot of little – those little throws, those little screens uh-huh. behind, the, behind the offensive line, uh-huh. a lot of throws to guys like Travis Kelsey who can just mm-hmm. make plays with the ball. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, Isaiah Pacheco mm-hmm. is one of the leading NFL players in yards after contact, broken tackles. So there's not a whole lot of things you can do tactically. The Chiefs just kind of beat you down and out, thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just more like pure athleticism and, like, just playmaking. I mean, there's so many playmakers on that team. I mean, we went to this year thinking that the, that the Chiefs would, like, kind of slump a little bit without Tyree yeah. Hill. I mean, Tyree Hill and Patrick Mahomes, they were, like, easily one of the best, if not the best duo in the league for the past few years. But now that he was gone, I was – I mean, again, remember back in – Back in August, we were, we thought the AFC West was going to be like super good, but it was wide, it was wide open. We didn't know they were going to win. Yeah, but the Chiefs won it easily, mm-hmm. um, and I mean, here we are. They're back in the Super Bowl, um, and that's all because they just have an insane amount of playmakers and a genius offensive playmaker. Offensive, uh, up, yeah, play caller, yeah, play, play caller, play designer, I should say. So, um, but yeah, so um, another thing I want to talk about another matchup is. It, these teams in the red zone and this, I mean, we, uh, thus far, I mean, we've been looking at it and it's kind of like eye for eye, these two teams. This is where the gap kind of widens a little bit. Um, the Chiefs red zone defense is among the worst in the league. Um, they allow a touchdown on pro- approximately 68% of drives um, that go into the red zone. So Chiefs red zone defense is absolutely office, awful. Um, I have not gotten the stats on the Eagles red, red zone offense. Um, I had to retrieve those. Um, but on the opposing side, the Eagles rep red zone defense is ranked 12th. So what is the percentage there? Do you have um, the percentage? I don't I have to get a percentage off the top of my head. Um, but I think it's around a lot around the likes of like 30 or 40 percent. 
Okay, so it's much something like that. Um, but yeah, the big difference here, and I think will also play a factor, is the red zone defense. Um, okay. The Chiefs are weak, and the Eagles are rather strong, um, just because of the Eagles' superior passing attack, which actually is in question. Um, another narrative that's coming around this week is I'm seeing all the talk show hosts trying to be different because the Eagles are favored. So now they're trying to come up with an excuse that the Eagles might lose, you know, because they all want to be different. Um, it's questioning the 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 validity of the elite name, the elite label that the Eagles pass defense gets. Now, this is partially due to the quarterbacks that they have faced. Um, the best quarterback that the Eagles have faced this season is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, like the the big like the best group, Kirk Cousins. Dak Prescott, you know, that tier of quarterback. Other than that, we played people to the likes of Daniel Jones, um, Taylor Heineke, um, again, Josh Johnson, Brock Purdy, you know, like that tier of quarterback. So people have a point. They say that the Eagles have not really faced um, very good quarterbacks. And when they have even faced quarterbacks in a even a, a, a above average above average proficiency offense, you get, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like the kind of like the next a step somewhat, of quarterbacks. So like a, a quarterbacks in a somewhat proficient, um, efficient offense. Yeah, the Eagles are like they rank a lot, like they have like horrible numbers against, mm-hmm. but they can easily contain you know Tyler Heineke, Davis Mills, okay. stuff like that. So now people are questioning the validity of the Eagles' pass defense. What are your thoughts on that? And I, I I'm sure you've read things about this. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it kind of builds on the point that I just made last time. I really don't think there's any consistent way to stop an offense led by Patrick Mahomes. If plays are called by Andy Reid. Mm-hmm. You have Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is one of the most unstoppable players in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, it, with all the injuries and the Tyreek Hill gone, you would think teams would just be able to key in on Travis Kelsey and mm-hmm. just – stop him but there's so many uh, Andy Reid is so smart Patrick Mahomes is such a good quarterback there's mm-hmm. so many ways to get Travis Kelsey the ball yeah that his one game this season that he had under 40 or I think it was he has like three games under 50 receiving yards his worst mm-hmm. one he had 25 receiving yards that game he caught four touchdowns yeah it's like if you stop him one way they'll mm-hmm. just give him the ball in the red zone they'll throw him a shovel pass yeah there's really no way for even the best Pass defenses. I mean, they they lit up the Niners. You remember that game against the Niners? They scored yes. four points. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to stop mm-hmm. the offense. You can only hope to contain them. Yeah, exactly. That's like I think the Eagles' defense is going to have to play like more of a bend and break. And mm-hmm. you know, let's just go into like some keys um, keys to the game here. I think the Eagles again have to get out to an early lead. They have to get the momentum while they're not the links. The momentum might not do that much for them. I think there's going to be a lot of Eagles fans that are going to be in Arizona. Um, for that game. Um, but again, against the Chiefs offense, you can't be caught sleeping. Um, again, like you just know, like you just noted, it's very explosive. Um, you know, I mean, the most most explosive plays in the league, they can really just come out of nowhere and just, you know, beat you down. So I think the key to this game, again, same as the NFC Championship game, is to get a turnover and get ahead early. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, my key is, do not let that Chiefs offense wear you down. Do not let them wear you down mentally. Do not let them wear you down physically. Mm-hmm. You cannot have this place where Christian McCaffrey, three guys should easily be able to tackle him, and he mm-hmm. just breaks free and rushes for a 30-yard touchdown that should have been a five-yard run. Yeah. And the, 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 you, do that, you can't let Mahomes do that in space. You can't let Travis mm-hmm. Kelsey do that. You have to make solid tackles. You can't be discouraged when, you know, it seems like you have them bottled up and Mahomes makes some crazy play. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got you got to – the whole defense has to be focused. TJ mm-hmm. Edwards is going to have to have the game of his life. Right. A lot of things yeah. are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with all those points. Um, so, um, now that we've gotten all of it, now we've taken all in all this and uh, talked about it, time to do some predictions. Um, what What's your prediction for this game? Is it like give me a score – a scenario, whatever. I'm so – I really don't want to say that I think the Eagles are going to win because that whole 2017 Super Bowl run, I went into every game just being sure that we were going to lose. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I feel like that contributed to the fact that we won. 
<laughs> this is the first time since 1980 that the Eagles are favored in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. It is the first time for the, the in both of the Chiefs' past Super Bowls they were favored. So this is mm-hmm. kind of uncharted territory for either team. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. I just I like I like our chances. I'm feeling like a like a 24 mm-hmm. 20 game. And you know, Mahomes has one last chance, mm-hmm. and the Eagles' defense just kind of locks him up. Yeah. I don't know that. That's my yeah. Final. So, so here, here's what I say. I agree with you. I think the Eagles are going to win this. Um, I think it's going to be a very explosive game. Um, it's going to be similar to Super Bowl Fifty Two. I'm not going to say it's going to be exact same, but I'm going to say like it's probably going to be like 34, 31. Jake Elliott game winning field goal. Uh, and the way that that circumstance happens is we get a, a um, Hassan Reddick strip sack um, at, at, at the oh. Chiefs 40 yard line, and there's like a minute left. You know, Ed, Pat, Patrick Mahomes is going on his classic like two minute drill or like 13 second drill. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it may be. And I think the Eagles are going to get a stop. I think this Eagles defensive line is just far too ruthless. Um, I don't think the Chiefs know what's coming, they can watch all the film they want. They can do all that, but they they do not know what's coming. Um, I think the I think the Chiefs' corners are pretty weak, and I think AJ Brown um, will have a field day. I think we'll see a, a bomb to Devontae Smith. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not saying the Eagles are going to blow them out again. 34-31. It's going to be a very tight game, but I think the Eagles have a lot of they have an, they have the advantage in a lot of positions. You know, one on one in this game. Yeah. I think the only the only position I really give the Chiefs is that quarterback. Um, you know, you can't doubt Patrick Mahomes. Tight end, um, tight end too. And then, and then you got tight end too with Travis Kelsey. Other than that, I can't point at any specific player and be like, yeah, like that, that, that's a better, like they have a better weapon than we do. Um, yeah. But anyway, 34 like 31, Eagles win. Huh? I said, I feel like we just committed a cardinal sin. We both just said that Patrick Mahomes is going to get the ball on a two minute drill and not score. Yeah. I, I, do not I feel, feel like we're just like jinx up. Like, I gotta, I know. Knock, gotta knock on wood. Knock on wood. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my official prediction. I think the okay. Eagles lose. I think Patrick Mahomes gets the ball and scores on a two minute drill. I think we lose twenty seven to twenty four. <laughs> okay. I can't I can't have both of us picking the Eagles. I don't feel good about fair that. Enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, I'm pumped. Um, I literally cannot wait. Um, I spent I've literally spent every night this week just thinking about it. Because I just want to like party on Broad Street. I don't know. I just, I just want to. I just can't wait. I don't know. I mean, I don't know, man. I just, whew, getting yeah. chills. I, I, miss, I miss this anticipatory week up to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's and been- it's really funny watching the media day too. Um, you know, really funny. Like, oh my gosh, let's talk about that a little bit before we go. Um, some of the interviews. One of the funniest. Like, first of all, there was a really dumb question asked to Nick Sirianni. Um, literally a reporter asked, he was like, Hey Nick, hey coach Nick, um, is this a must win game? <laughs> no, it's like, not, but... yeah, yeah, no, they literally did. They literally asked it. They asked a coach during Super Bowl media week if the Super Bowl was a must win game. Hmm. Like, that what? Had to, that's kind of <laughs> yeah, joke. and first of, and then and then another reporter asked Nick Sirianni, he was like, Hey, which player on the Eagles would you not let your daughter date? <laughs> Kind of Nick Sirianni's daughter is five. What did he say? <laughs> he was like, "My daughter's five. <laughs> oh. My daughter's five years old. That's all." Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's a clown, absolute clown. So uh, th- those were just some funny moments. Um, but yeah, soak it in, guys. Um, we might not see this for a while. I mean, we we don't know what what the future holds. So enjoy the Super Bowl run. Um, have fun with your families, your friends. Um, stay safe. If the Eagles win, don't don't go drinking and driving or any of that. Just stay safe, enjoy, uh, and you know, go birds. Go birds. We'll see you guys go next birds. week. Win or lose. We'll see, you. we'll see you guys next week. Hopefully, celebrating the Eagles Super Bowl championship. Um, if not, we will both be um, in the Hopefully. void, just suffering. Oh. I don't want to cry on camera. No, I'm not trying to cry again. Not at the Phillies. So, yeah. Uh, But anyway, have a good week, guys. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Stay safe and go birds.